Okay, if I'm just talking about f and I say the derivative, it makes sense to say what's f prime of x is the derivative of f. But if I'm talking about something else, there's no way to apply a prime to it. So if I have like x squared plus 1 and I want to say take the derivative of that, it doesn't make sense to go like this because that looks like x plus 1 to the first power. That doesn't look like a prime and it, there, that's what, not good notation in this situation because it's not clear what you want me to do. But the ddx notation is much more obvious. Okay, I'm asking you to take the derivative of this. So we don't really write like ddx of f of x, although you totally could and that is meaningful. But if you are talking about a function and then you want to say what's the derivative of that function, this notation makes the most sense. But if we're talking about what the function is and you want to take the derivative, you can't really primify like a random thing. This is just like to the first. Okay? So that's why we use this notation in that context. So it's not that it's like necessarily important, it's like useful. So we'll still go back and forth depending on like how I've, if I've defined a function and I'm talking about it later, or if I'm asking like right away what's the derivative of this function. And when we do all the rules, I'll actually show you notation that are for both. So if you have like a preference, sometimes one's easier to remember than the other. Okay, so this is what we're proving. This is the power rule. What should we like start with if we were trying to prove one of these things? Like what are we always going to start with when we're trying to prove what the derivative of something is? But the definition. Yeah, the definition, right? So the definition of the derivative, we're going to use the h definition. That way we don't have to factor a length n polynomial. Okay? So the h definition is at the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h. So that's x plus h to the n power minus x to the n power over h. That's our limit definition um, for this example. I mean, for anything, but that's our limit written out in this case. I'm just going to keep writing this until it's like you know it backwards and forwards, but this is the general form. General form in purple, applying it in green. So far, so good? Okay. Question? <laughs> we are recalling that that is the definition. You know what I learned yesterday? This, this is like, okay. Um, it was, it, so it's in combinatorics, uh, which is, this was the proof. Okay. So we need to expand this out. We actually don't need a lot of terms. Think about what we need to happen. We, need, we know already that the first term of this is what? X. And we know that's going to cancel with that. Right? All of the other terms should have an H in it. All of them except one will actually disappear. So we don't need a ton of terms here. So let's just write down a couple of terms. So we have limit h goes to 0. I'm going to write down like three or four terms. So I have x to the n plus, um, I'm not going to write down h to the 0, but you know it's there. Um, n choose 1, x to the n minus 1 times h. And I'm just changing y for h here, but otherwise it's the same. n choose 2, x, n minus 2, h squared. I'm not even going to write these other ones down. Because I've got a bunch of stuff here. Because what's going to happen? When I subtract the x to the n, these will cancel, so that's good. The h cancels everything. So the h cancels this. And so this, only one that's exactly, all of these still have an h. So when I make h equal to 0, I am left with only one term, this one. And what does n choose 1? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that nice? Yeah. So because of the way it works when you cancel all the h's, we know that all of these terms have h's in them. 
So once you cancel one H out of everything, this is the only one that remains. Everything else will still have an H, so plugging in zero for H, well, it'll disappear. This is our only remaining term, and so that's all that's left. Now, if you had a different calculus teacher, they would have started from here and just been like, these are the first two terms, and like, who cares about those, and whatever. So you got the like extra part of like why these are what they are. Most people just like say like, this, it's all good. Wait, so this is your favorite class class. Yeah, because I really like doing the common torques part. And I told the Mr. Kaplan was like, do they like it? And I'm like, I force them to like it. I don't allow them to tell me they don't like it. <laughs> You all loved it, right? Yeah. yeah. Knew, it. knew it. Knew it. Knew it. Changing things. It's it's like more complicated than that, but that's like the general field. <laughs> combinatorics. Yeah. So combinatorics is a binomial theorem lecture that I just enjoy, um, and none of you had me for algebra two, so you've never heard it before. So. Okay. So the binomial theorem is just how you expand a binomial. So in theory, you saw this in Algebra 2 or maybe analysis. But it says that when you have two things, and we're just going to, uh, I think we'll use, actually, I'm going to use x and y to start out, and then we'll substitute the h in the end. So you have x plus y, and you're multiplying that out n times, OK? And there's a formula for getting what each of the things are. And as it turns out, that formula, the coefficients of each of the things is actually in Pascal's triangle because all of these things are connected. So the first thing I want to do is remind you about what choose means, like n choose k. Do you kind of remember that? No. Great, let's talk about that. I'm going to write above this, not below it. OK, so n choose k is pronounced n choose k, like that. N choose K. It's the number of ways to choose K, K objects from N objects. So the number of ways to choose or select K. Sorry, I'm like writing it up above. Is that really annoying? K objects from a group of N. Okay. Yeah, maybe a box would be good. Actually, in my notes, it's in a box on the side over here. So it's not that big. All right, so this is going to be important because the way that we're going to think about multiplying a binomial that has n terms is choosing either x or y from every pair. Okay? So that's why we're going to use this, and that's where the coefficients end up coming from. So. The order is not, not going to matter in this situation. I'm just choosing k balls out of a box of n balls, or whatever it is. So as an example, just to like remind ourselves what this thing is, let's say I'm starting with four objects, so the set of one, two, three, and four. And I want to choose sets of two objects. How many ways can I do that? So just take a second to write all the two element sets I can make from these four. OK, so choose two element sets. How many different two element sets can I choose? And then sets order doesn't matter. So two and four is the same as four and two. Okay. So two element sets from these three things, from these four things. Yeah. How many do you have? Six. Six. One, two, one, three, one, four, two, three, two, four, and three, four. Right? Is that what you have? Yeah. Okay, so that question is four, choose two. Okay? Two element sets out of a set of four. What is four, choose one? Uh, four. Four, right? A one element set would be just any of the four things. One, two, three, four. What's four choose three? Four. So four choose two we saw is six. Four choose one we said is four. What's four choose three? three. Wait. Four. Two. Why is it four? 
Because it is four ones. There's only you know, there's four things and you're leaving one out each time. Right. So choosing one thing is the same as not choosing one thing. So four choose one and four choose three are the same. And that's one of the properties of choose, right? Like if I had started with five elements, five choose two is the same as five choose three because choosing two element sets is the same as leaving out three element sets. So it's the same as choosing three element sets to leave out. So there's like this nice parity, um, like parallel symmetry, symmetry is the word for it. nice symmetry with choose problems, okay? Now we just listed the four element sets, but how do we do this in general? Like, you're not really listing them every time. So how are we going to do this in general? I'm going to move this down. Does anyone know the choose formula? Okay, let's figure this out. How many choices did you have for the first element of the original question, the four choose two question? How many choices do you have for the first? Four, four right? Is this the same thing we did like last year in staff? No, Probably, yeah. yeah. We did this you have four. You could have started with any of one, two, three, or four. For the first element, you could have started with any of one, two, three, or four. Once you've chosen the first element, how many choices do you have for the second element? Three. So you had four choices for the first, three choices for the second, but I didn't get 12. Why not? Because I had to divide by two because of the order. So I need to divide not by two, but I need to divide by the way, number of ways to order the number of elements you have which is actually two factorial, which is two. But I just want to point that out because if I'm extending this in general, it's actually the number of elements in the choosing set factorial because you have how many ways to order those elements like if it was six factorial. And three factorial. Yeah. So I'm going to write it like that. So now if I'm, so let me just put some words in here so these notes make sense. So this is number of ways to choose two elements. And this is the number of ways to order two elements. You have to divide by the number of orders. Okay. Number of ways to order two elements. And then I will I'll extend this to the general n and k choice. Um, okay. So far, so good? Yeah. Great. So let's do now n and k instead of 2 and 4. So I'm starting, I need like more colors here. Orange? Orange is crazy. How about purple? Okay, so I'm starting with a set of n. So what should the top of my fractions look like? I'm getting k out of n. So I have how many choices for the first? n times n minus Yeah, so n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. When do I stop? This is actually a trickier question than it seems. When do I stop? So I stop. So I'm choosing. It depends on the bottom. It depends. Yeah. So how, how is it related to k? Like it has k in the answer. Because it's like k number of factorial minus two factorial on the top. Could that be? Yeah. So yeah. It's not. I don't stop at two. I didn't stop at two. I stopped at three. Not quite. That is k plus one, but that's not. That's not actually the general form. So how many? You, how many numbers do I want here? Just two. K. k numbers. How do I get k numbers? Close. Sorry, I didn't question. Yeah. Does it choose two elements? Yeah. Okay. N minus. Uh, n minus k is. Uh, in this case, if I did n minus k, I would have stopped at 2. It's n minus k plus 1. That gives me k elements on the top. Okay. It's okay if you didn't like see that, but you could do a couple of examples. I think you would see, okay. Because you need k total elements on the top. So this ends up being n minus k plus 1. So like in our 4 case, it, we finished at 3. We finished at 4 minus 2 plus 1. Oh, but that's only, like, how, how does that make sense? Exactly? That these are k, that there's k things here? No, I get that there's k things, okay. but why is it, why do you stop at n minus k plus 1? Right, because the number of ways to choose k elements, uh -huh. I need, this is my first element, this is my second element, this is my third element, this is my kth element. 
Now I need to divide by the ordering situation. But that, this is how many ways I could get a k element set with the order mattering, and then I want the order not to matter, so that's where the division comes in. Okay. Okay. What? Do you have a question? No. Yeah. Um, is it the transform come in again? Right. So I wanted k elements up here. Do we see why I want k elements up here? Because I want to be multiplying for each of the slots I'm filling. I have n for the first one, n minus one for the second one. So to get k elements up here, if I stop here, I actually have one short. So that's why I stop with one. See, because this is like the zero, one, two, three, k. So I need one more. So it's like n minus k plus one. Yeah, you, yeah. Okay. n minus k minus one, actually, in parentheses. n minus k minus one. Which is n minus oh, yes, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah so n minus K-1. All right, so far are we okay? What goes on the bottom? K factorial. K factorial. There's K elements. I have to order them all. So that's just K factorial. So that's K, K-1, K-2. Now, this is actually not the best way to write this. And I'm, I'm going to, maybe I'll just tell you what it is. I'll just tell you what it is, and we'll see that it's the same. Okay, the k factorial is appearing twice. So we see that, right? This bottom is just k factorial. Do you see how this top is actually n factorial over n minus k factorial? Basically what I'm saying is like the tail end of this would be n minus k factorial. So if I divide that off, then I have all of n factorial dividing off the n minus k factorial. So this is equivalent to just saying the division of Violet, and then. Um, well, you said like the last one should be n minus k minus 1, yeah. right? But like, then it, it looks like you're adding 1 to like everything that you've multiplied there, right? What if I wrote it like that? Is that better? Yeah, but. Uh, mm, sorry. Okay. Are you now multiplying by that whole expression? It's, All of the things are multiplied. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. No, that's a really good point, actually. It looks like I'm adding one to everything, and that's not what I meant to do. Oh, wait, wait, what? Sorry. She was pointing out that, like, I want the term, oh, that's all in this term to be this, and it kind of looked like I was multiplying by that and then adding one at the end, and that's not what I was. Yeah, right. Uh, what does it say after a number of ways to choose? This says the number of ways to choose two elements, and it says the number of ways to order two elements. Okay, so now we have a definition for n choose k. Progress is being made. Oh, okay. we might run out of time. Okay, can we can we move keep moving? Yeah. Okay, how does this relate at all to what we're talking about? Here's how. So now when I go back and talk about the binomial theorem, so now this is like binomial theorem down here. I have x plus y, n times. So I have n x plus y's. Okay n times. Yeah? Okay. Now, is this, back to the binomial this is back to the binomial theorem. Yeah. So now I have x plus y n times. So how many, what do I want to ask first? Each term in this expanded binomial comes from a combination of x's and y's. In each binomial, you're either multiplying by the x or the y. So all of the possible ways to choose x's and y's are all of the possible terms that you're going to get. So what I mean by that is like one thing you could do is multiply all the x's. What would I get if I multiplied just x's? How many ways are there to multiply just x's? Just one. It's multiplied just x's. But, but when you FOIL, that's what you're doing. You're multiplying x by every single other term, and then y by every single other term. So you can think of the terms as all the combinations of x's and y's. So then the next thing I could do is I could have one x and the rest y's. How many ways are there to do that? One x and the rest y's. I could have this x and all y's. N. Because I could have this x and all y's, or this x and all y's, or this one, or this one, or this one, or this one, and then the rest y's. 
So, oh, sorry, that's backwards of what I wanted. Um, so what I was saying is one X and the rest Y's, but what I actually want is one Y and the rest X's so that they're in order. So the first one had no Y's, right? So I could think of this term as like no Y's, just pick an X from every term, every binomial. Wait, so there's not just one? Yeah, that was one. There's one way to do that. No, but one. Isn't, isn't is it yes. Y to the It's actually the times. The next one was to have a single Y from a single Y and then an X from all of the other binomials. And there are N ways to do that. Because I could have chosen this Y or this Y or this Y and then everything else X. So there's N different terms you're going to get out of the multiplication that have N minus 1 X's and 1 Y. Still with me? What if I had two Y's? I don't necessarily expect a number here. But what's the question? Choose two y's from n sets. <laughs> Too much. n minus two ways. Well, what did I just say in choose language? What is it? I'm choosing two y's from n sets of things. It's n choose 2. Right? Because I have n different binomials here. Two of them need to be y. Okay? I could have gone back, you're going to hate this, and not written this as n, but written it as from my n sets, choose 1 to be y. And I could have written here, from my n sets, choose 0 to be y. Do we see the pattern coming out? Okay. So my next one should be, from my n sets, choose 3 to be y. Yes, and then exactly. When down here, it should reverse, right? So in my last terms, I should be choosing no x's and all y's. I need a, something before that. I should have, oh, sorry, I'm not leaving the right space. 1x, y, n minus 1. What should these, what should these be? What should this be? And choose n. Look, notice it's always that you're choosing the y power, the way I've written it. So this would be n choose n, this would be n choose n minus 1. So do we see how this is like, this is a pattern, right? We see this pattern? And n minus 1. But people have already pointed out and we saw before with the symmetry question, this number should be the same as this number. And this number should be the same as this number. And they work themselves in to give you the same thing. Maybe just eventually. Yes. So somewhere in the middle, it'll switch. So this, is, this has to be, we need n greater than 3 for this to be good. Sorry, is that n over h or, uh, or is no, n, or n, n over n? N over n. N choose n. There's no h's in this. So that's the binomial formula. So now let's write it in summation notation. Because why not? Because we can. x plus y to the n equals the sum. You, this you know? Summation notation? <laughs> you don't have to do it this way, but I'm going to do it this way. You can write it out every time. And you supposed to put something on the top and the bottom here? Yes. I, I'm going to go back to say okay. what it is in a second. Uh, I just want to keep my yeah, n minus k y to the k. What should go on the bottom here? It's K that's counting up. And on the top? Good. Nice. Nailed it. That's, this is just summation notation for that. So the sum of N and K equals zero? Huh? The sum of N and K equals Isn't that saying the sum? Oh, that's saying start when k equals 0 and count all the way up until k equals 1. Like, k is the bottom thing, right? So it's 0, 1, 2, 3, and the end. That's what, the, that's what this means. It means count up the k's from starting k equals 0 and going up to n. That's just the summation form. All right. Now, I feel like I'm not going to get to tell you why these numbers are the Pascal's triangles numbers, but they are. 
And that is a really fun fact. So you can find these in Pascal triangle. You don't have to compute them. <laughs> They're just equivalent. Yeah, but like when they were discovered. Where there's like one um, I think. Or did like one come from the other? I, I th they're just they're they're the same, so I feel like it's hard to say that like maybe one notation. Is I, yeah, I was just saying. But you can just you can explain, which I'm not gonna have time to do. Why so the Pascal's triangle rule is that you add the two numbers above. Yeah. And you can explain why that rule gives you why n choose k is actually n minus one choose k. K minus one plus, like you can explain that rule, but I'm not, I'm not gonna be able to do that. But we, at a later date, we absolutely should. Okay, let's go back to our proof because we're ready for it now. No, this is the background. Okay, we have three minutes, so focus. <laughs> 